All right, Jordan, so we've had about three days now of World's Edge gameplay. Uh, they've been playing pretty much nonstop. Uh, what are your thoughts so far on the maps? I would say my thoughts on World's Edge have drastically changed over the course of a few days. In the very beginning, I was really sad that Kings Canyon was gone because World's Edge was just so wide and so open and it made it more difficult to engage in like the fast paced close quarters combat that Kings Canyon kind of helped emphasize and World's Edge seemed to me at least to encourage snipers and more long range combat. But as I kept playing it, my opinion of it has drastically changed and now I'm really beginning to like World's Edge. And I think it's mainly because the map seems to, instead of having a focus on location that Kings Canyon did, we're finding the ideal spot to hold up and bunker and hold the position to let the fight come to you or if you see someone else is already in the right spot to go to them, defeat them, and take over the location that they have, that World's Edge seems to emphasize movement a bit more and different types of movement. Now there are these underground passageways and tunnels that you can go through, or there's all these like crisscrossing zip lines. Like you don't really have that in Kings Canyon, but in World's Edge, there's all these points where you can like jump on a zip line and like halfway across, you can jump off onto another zip line and go in another direction to get behind someone, but coming from above as opposed to coming at them straight on. And I think that's really cool that this map kind of funnels people to try to either take the high ground or go the low ground to flank people from different directions. It's a very different style of play as opposed to King's Canyon, and I'm not totally used to it yet, but I like it, I think, because it's so different, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think there's definitely a lot more forethought you have to put into your fights now, mm -hmm. positioning-wise, just because there's much, there's so many different biomes, there's so many different areas with that, and you have to kind of take advantage of your grounds that you have. So, like again, like the zip lines that crisscross, or like the trains that come along. Yeah. Um, you have to really think about those things in every fight now, because Kings Canyon was was fairly static, besides the. Um, what were they called? The... Oh, the Flyers and Leviathans? Yeah, yeah, so besides the Leviathans stomping around and the Flyers, you know, flying around once in a while, uh, there wasn't much movement in the map, but mm -hmm. this map is constantly on on the move, uh, I feel like. Um, with Yeah, especially because, you know, there's the lava areas, there's the train, uh, there's the crisscross and zip lines, there's so many other factors to this that it makes it more interesting than you have other options in, in fights, for sure. Yeah, it feels like the environment is like taking part in the battle. You have to worry about lava. You have to be aware of the geyser that you can jump into that uh, will propel you up into the sky. You have to be worried about the fact that if you're fighting another team on the train tracks, like the train might be coming and could like run you over. Or it could be a great way to just hop on and easily escape because damn, that thing is fast. Yeah, it is but really fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty map too. Like the way that it's divided between like the icy region at the top and the fire region at the bottom with cities and like settlements kind of like sprinkled all throughout it. Like I, I like the dichotomy, the binary aspect of the map a lot. Yeah, the actual like biome design is I think it's really, really freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, they, between like the ice area of uh, ground zero uh, over there and then the lava area and then the melted area in between where it's just lush environments, I think it's just really well designed. Uh, when I first dropped in a week ago, uh, it was, it's been kind of a roller coaster of emotions for me. <laughs> when I first dropped in, I was like, man, this map is great. And then after like six games in, I was like, man, I kind of don't like the open grounds because there's just a lot of hoof in it and there's just a lot of running around right um and that kind of attracts more third partying so you're a lot of squads are just kind of roaming around trying to find places to go and then as soon as they hear gunfire i think it's more of a kind of a fly attracted uh situation where there's just nothing else to do mm -hmm. besides maybe kind of the occasional loot area uh, i think kind of king's canyon kind of guided you from place to place better um but then at the end, I think within the last like couple days now, I've been starting to turn back around on it and I've been starting to like it more because I've been getting used to that kind of style of like, okay, I know where to go now because I've been learning the map better uh, and just forcing myself to just get from place to place quicker. Right. And I really liked the point that you brought up with like as soon as you fight someone, like someone will usually come running to like third party you because like on King's Canyon, you could be like, 
walking through an area and you would hear like a firefight off to your left and like another off to your right and maybe one like totally in the distance it's like well which direction do you want to go whereas in world's edge because the map is just so big like there as soon as you hear like any type of gunshot like every squad in the vicinity is going in that direction so you have to kind of really decide like is engaging this squad in front of us worth it? Like, do we have the right amount of gear for taking on someone right now, knowing that the second that we do, we're probably gonna have to fight like two or three other yeah, squads. <laughs> that's definitely the the issue that I've been having so far. But uh, Crypto has been kind of helping out with that situation with the banner hacking, mm -hmm. um, where we can kind of see how many squads are in the area. So if you you know only have one squad in the area, you can you know safely fight them one on one, hopefully without getting third party. Uh, otherwise, if there's like two or more, then you're likely to get uh, a pretty bad situation. <laughs> oh yeah, like Crypto is like the ideal character to add for a map like this. Like had his addition and Watson's been reversed and like we were getting Watson on this map, like it is rough to find a spot to bunker down with Watson, but having someone who can just like tell you how many squads are in the vicinity and where people are hiding behind like rocks far away without actually having to like sprint up to the rock to like check is like, it's a godsend. I love it yeah. so much. It's probably, like, the best purpose for him, and I'm worried when we do ultimately get King's Canyon back, like, how he's going to fit into that new meta. But currently, like, in World's Edge, like, Crypto is ideal. And yeah. I, I don't always like saying that because I don't really like using him, but I feel almost <laughs> naked whenever I'm in a squad and none of us are Crypto, and I'm like... Okay, we're gonna struggle, I think, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, knowledge is power quote comes into play here, mm -hmm. where if you just know the battleground better, if you know how many enemies are in the area and where they are, you could just plan your whole plan of attack much better instead of just kind of roaming around and he trying to listen in on where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, crypto is very useful in these areas. Um, I also feel like movement characters really benefit in this meta too with this with this map. So Octane, Pathfinder, mm -hmm. just to get around the map faster just because it is so large. Yeah. Um, and to help your squad out, you know, with zip lines to move around faster as well. It's just, uh, it's very clutch. And uh, so I've been using those characters a little bit more now these days. I say, especially since it, I can't like say for sure, but it seems like high tier loot is just a little bit more spread out. Like before on King's Canyon, it seemed like I could go to a location and like, oh, we left the location and two of us have blue body shields and we all have two different weapons and whatnot. And now it seems like we're landing in a spot and most of us are fairly outfitted, but we definitely need to like get to another spot as quickly as possible to have like a base level of gear and weapons. Like the map is almost encouraging you like like you can't on. just like stay yeah you have to move on and like actually like keep pushing forward to find the things that you need that's the exact problem that i had when i was playing uh in the original uh drop a week ago or so and i was telling the developers this that they probably should either just increase the amount of common loot it doesn't have to be high tier loot but just mm -hmm. to get on the ground running you know uh, some, sometimes we drop and one of us doesn't have a shield or doesn't have a gun by the time we get out of like a, you know, a sort of high tier area. Yeah, which is terrifying. Which is kind of terrifying, <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, why are we so unoutfitted in a fairly congested loot area? Mm -hmm. And so that was one of the things that I hope that they'll be working on soon mm -hmm. is to just change the loot situation. Um, and I say, I almost wonder and we were kind of talking about this right beforehand, if the meta will almost change when the vaults open, because those will present spots where you can get really good loot in a very specific area. And like, there are three of them on the map. Like, no one's managed to like get into them yet. So for all we know, like World's Edge will feel like a completely different type of battlefield, like when those vaults finally open. But for now, like, you're right. Like, loot is just so scattered so having a movement yeah. character like pathfinder or octane it almost seems like a necessity yeah i feel like yeah definitely uh, just a high movement squad wraith or pathfinder uh, to help move the entire squad around is, is very important and yeah i think the the golden vault meta it may have a bad impact it may have a good impact i think depending on how they do it hopefully it's what i'm hoping is one random loot tick on the entire map will have one key 
mm -hmm. and it's completely random. And of course, I'm pretty sure that when you pick up this key, you'll take up one slot in your inventory, and then if you get killed, they can pick up that key too, so it's fair game. Right. Um, but there might be some camping involved, possibly. You know, people camping by the golden vault saying, oh, they're probably going to come by and, uh, you know, open the, the door for us, and then we can, like, you know, uh, we can attack them afterwards. Yeah, so that's what I don't want. I like the fact that World's Edge is, like, causing people to roam and like move around and explore the map and experiment with a bunch of things. I don't want the vaults to open and then it suddenly becomes like half of the squads are camping out at each of the three vaults, killing each other, and then the survivors are just waiting there for one of the other squads that went out to like actually find the key and approach right. one of the three vaults. Like that doesn't sound fun. So hopefully it doesn't screw with the meta because right now I do for the most part enjoy what World's Edge is, and I don't want it to become worse. So how are you liking the train so far since you've played it now? I would say the the train has led to more like hilarious moments than actual good moments for me. My squads and I love just like jumping on it and like trying to melee people off and like take control of the train more so than actually trying to get on it to get the loot that's usually on the train since it's essentially the new uh, drop ship from like King's Canyon. Um, it's like a semi skull town, a moving skull yeah, town almost. Yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> and I like it. I like the fact that unlike the drop ship from King's Canyon, which like you could only get on like when it was approaching like its landing spot and like extending out its uh, zip lines, the train you can essentially jump on it whenever you want as long as you're near it. Uh, so it's kind of like this constant presence that's on the battlefield. but. I don't really have too much of an opinion either way. I think it's awesome and I think it's fun, but it seems to the most part just kind of seem to balance into World's Edge's overall meta, which is the idea of like constantly moving. Like we're not even gonna allow you to have this train as a spot to bunker down. Like you're gonna get on it and it's just gonna keep moving. Yeah, it's gonna keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the verticality has been kind of hit or miss for me uh, specifically, I think, I think, uh, is it in Capital City where there's buildings that are like 50 stories tall, but you can only access like the bottom two? Yeah, it's weird because like some of the buildings you can only go like one or two stories up. Some have like long elevator shafts. You can go in like floor one, two, and three, and then like 15 or something like that. Cause you just ride a zip line all the way to the top. And then there's that construction site, which is, I want to say off the top of my head, five stories, but that don't quote me on that. It's like one of those weird things, the like King's Canyon, all the buildings were either one or two stories, and maybe I think there was one that had like three. And now we're getting all of these maps where I can be like on a floor, and my teammates can be on like two floors above me, and then another squad can be like on a floor above them, and like there's this added verticality to the movement, and it kind of feels almost like a Call of Duty's Blackout map that had like the construction site. Um, it's kind of like that moment where you have to kind of not only worry about the enemies in front of you, but enemies that could be coming up from below you or from above you. I'm not quite sure how I like it so much yet. I it's, feel like I feel like characters like Pathfinder can definitely benefit in those situations. Oh yeah, I've been killed by quite a few Pathfinders <laughs> in the construction site. Yeah, there's also an area to the top left of the map. I forgot what the area is called. Uh, Skyhook? Skyhook. Yeah. To, yeah, to the northwest of Skyhook, there is like a sort of secret mountain, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And it kind of, it really shows off the quality of the the map design as well, in my opinion. And the just how beautiful it is, really. Like mm -hmm. on Xbox One X, or obviously like, you know, a maxed out PC. It just looks really pretty up there. And I think they just did a great job designing the map. But for now, World's Edge, I'm happy with it. And I like I, it. they don't have to change too much with it. I agree. <laughs> So that's what we thought about World's Edge. If you're curious about other stuff about Season 3, we have a full breakdown of all the changes that are coming, as well as an in-depth video guide for Crypto, the new recon legend, and how his drone abilities work. So be sure to check both of those out if you're jumping back into Apex with the start of Season 3 Meltdown. We also want to hear what you all think about the new season, as well as the new map and the new legends. So leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts.